hit next and yeah, see what yeah. shows up. Oh, cool. You should talk about it. <laughs> 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 That's All right, yeah, so my name is John Fury. I'm a PhD uh, student at Columbia University right now, graduating soon. And um, before this, I worked at NASA doing environmental monitoring for the astronauts in space. And I really always had a heart for international development. And when I saw where things were going at NASA, I ended up going to Columbia and, and, and moving into this. I, I've done water monitoring all over the place, especially in Bangladesh, where I did my, my dissertation work. And one of the big problems we have right now is um, a lot more people have access to water in the world, as you probably heard the, the last couple of weeks you know, about the, the good news from the UN about meeting the Millennium uh, Development Goal target for improving access to water. But what we don't know is the quality of the water that people are drinking. <coughs> That's probably what a lot of you guys are, are thinking about here this weekend. So. Um, but one of the, one of the things that, that, that we started doing, um, together with my co-founders, Annie and Dean, we're starting a, an entrepreneurial startup called MWater. And what we're trying to do is provide um, mobile phone-based tools and other high-tech solutions to really simple test kits that can be used to, um, to detect water quality in developing countries and low-resource areas anywhere. Um, so one of the first things we did was um, we had these uh, We have these uh, Petri films, which can be, uh, actually there was a previous hackathon last year, you may have heard the water hackathons in the fall. Um, there was a group in Montreal that had their own hackathon, and I challenged them to come up with, um, with an Android app that could read these Petri films, figure out the number of bacteria, the different types of colonies based on their color, and, uh, and they, did, they did an amazing job. And now, uh, using this phone, which costs it's probably the worst Android phone you've ever seen, but it costs 100 bucks in Sub-Saharan Africa. And 80% of the growth in, Afri in the African market is going to be in these type of phones for the next 50 years. So um, it can take a photo of this, give you results instantly, and, and our, our goal is ultimately to make those results available on the net. And this week we've been doing that in New York City. We tested water, we tested the Hudson River, Central Park ponds, the reservoir, which all have E. coli, by the way, don't go drink those water sources. <laughs> unless you really are thirsty. Uh, and so what, what we were thinking now for this event, something that would be really nice, small, and packaged well that we could do uh, would, be, would be to sort of take the, the idea of the, the pH sensors that, that um, uh, you know, I just saw uh, the guy from Atlas. I'm sorry, was it? Yeah, Jordan, right? Uh, yeah, so if, if, you know, the next step below that, that, that would be the ideal for most people, you know, in, especially in, in a high-tech environment like here, but in a low resource environment. Um, there's a lot of test kits now that basically involve some kind of color change, and that's what these are. Uh, these are really cheap, and they don't provide really high quality results, but I kind of have always thought that if we had a better um, way of comparing, you know, like these are kind of, you know, you, you look at the chart and you see it's closer to four, or closer to two, or closer to one. Well, a cell phone should be able to do this problem pretty easily. If we can, if we can detect what's red and blue on these, we should be able to find everything in between. So that's what I was kind of thinking. Um, and these, these low-cost kits, you know, have, there's a lot of different parameters. You can do pH, nitrates, phosphates, all kinds of dissolved oxygen, free chlorine. Um, these are all things that are really important in developing countries for people to uh, to be able to get a very basic assessment of their water quality. So that's that's kind of what we were thinking was, you know, if, if there's anybody here that has some experience in how to do Android um, image processing, or, or if you think that you, know, you can do the, the, the photography part, or you know, whatever, wherever we can work there. So, yeah. Let's go to the next slide. Cool. Awesome. So yes, it's an Android phone. Who has an Android phone here? Yes. Yay. So uh, that's what I'm going to work on. <laughs> I'll take one of those. Yeah, you don't want to do this one. <laughs> um, so my name is Joe Savedra. I teach here uh, at Parsons in this lovely uh, space that we have now. Um, I have been working on a environmental DIY environmental monitoring tool sets called Citizen Sensor. Is the project Citizen Sensor CC. Mostly, I've done work in air quality. Um, and, and you know, environmental sensing, not water sensing, not including water sensing. So I'm really excited uh, when this idea started. I was like, oh, that sounds awesome. Um, and there's been you know a lot of work in this area, and so uh, jumping into it is something I'm really excited about. Um, another thing I'm really excited about is mobile. Um, and even like how Ivan said, your plan B was just to take your thermometer and kind of 
Well, I think we can even have a plan B where you know you could have a thermometer in the water and your phone showing you that data, then that data being pushed uh, online to a service like uh, Yushihidi or Patchfo. Um, so what I'm going to work on is is this kind of stuff, combining uh, you know these kits, uh, like John, like exactly what you're talking about. So this this is another uh, solution where the, we use the phone's camera to take an image, process that image. Um, this is the Android ADK. Um, I'm sorry, the Arduino Android ADK uh, board. This is an Arduino that's specifically designed to work with Android phones. So. This is one way where we could connect a temperature sensor, a digital temperature sensor to this board, have that data go over your USB cord or Bluetooth to an Android application, then get beamed up uh, to the cloud. And um, you know, this kind of stuff is now more accessible than ever and cheaper than ever. And so um, this is what I will be uh, spending you know, tomorrow over here. Uh, it's really exciting. What is the next slide here? Visually, put it on the map. We're gonna put it on the map.